last time we spoke was in season one and you said that Jalan was the hero in her own story. And as the series has gone on, we've seen and felt that transformation. How early on did Christina and Bob kind of clue you on, on this redemption arc? And how soon after that season two finale did they tell you that they were bringing you back for season three? Oh yeah, I think it, well, it happened when at the end of season one, um, I, I wasn't sure if her story was ending. I, I pretty much assumed that it was because it was kind of wrapped up in a neat bow for her to be the season's villain. And I just assumed that there'll probably be another villain that wasn't me in the next yeah. you know season. So I got the really wonderful phone call from Bob and Christina um, asking if I would want to be a series regular. So with that, it meant that I would be coming back, hopefully, if they, wa if they wanted me for the next seasons, however long that we were going to go for. Um, so it was at that point that I was clued in that, yeah, if, if Jalan is coming back, then we're going to see kind of a transition period for her from going from the big baddie to maybe not so bad to maybe yeah. a little bit better and then <laughs> having this full on redemption story. So it's been, it's been a really great wild ride and to take her through that process is, is a lot of fun to say the least of each season, Christina and Bob sit down with each of the actors and discuss what they want to see from their characters. What did you want to make sure was part of her storyline in season three? Oh, for season three, I mean, when I talked to them about it, for me, it was all about, well, what, what is her purpose this season? Because in seasons one and two, she really wanted to go after Russell Tan. Like that mm. man and that family was her <laughs> sole concern, right? Yeah. Her, her revenge arc for her family. And in this season, what we've seen from her is a softening of her, still not losing the bite, which was really important to me because that's so much of what her personality is. So I think she can do good in her own way. And that's what mm -hmm. we're seeing. Um, but also just in terms of her purpose, well, now we see that she is really focused on saving Paling and having that family dynamic. And what does that mean for her? What does family mean for her? What does a community mean for her? being part of the Shuby gang now, <laughs> yeah. which has been a lot of fun. So that's what we were discussing is what does this journey look like for her now? And where is she going? And who is that going to be with? So mm. Perfect segue to this next question. But you've handled her journey with so much nuance, especially her vulnerability. And in episode 307, we see this beautiful moment between Peiling and Jalan where they're able to reconnect and come to terms with their past. What was your reaction when you read that uh, scene in particular and how did you prepare for that moment? Yeah, that was something that was actually talked about at the um, beginning of the season. So kind of going back to your previous question, we're talking with Bob and Christina, he said there will be a reconciliation between the two mm. sisters. And we did talk about that moment because I'm like, the, the nuance there is that it, there's so much that was unsaid as there was that was said in that moment yeah. too. Um, because Jalan is not someone to really confront those feelings. She does things through actions. And for her, saving Pei Ling maybe would have been the way that she could show, hey, I'm really sorry. But it's like, no, that's not enough. You got to confront. You got to confront it, right? That's right in front of you. And Nikki really showed her that. So having that discussion with them was really nice because I think that was a moment that was really, really due for those two, mm -hmm. especially having finally come together in real life since that moment in the pilot <laughs> of season one. Um so that was a really cathartic experience. And we, we worked through that scene quite a bit just to see mm -hmm. like, what is the wordings here that are really going to do both of these characters justice to show what they were feeling and to say what they were feeling in that moment. So, yeah. Yeah, as a standout scene throughout the series. And, you know, like you were saying earlier, you know, your character brings a lot of humor and she's become the voice of reason in many of the different situations. How much of that is ad lib versus scripted? And how much fun is it for you to bring that levity to a series where everything is so high stakes? Who would have thought she would be the voice of reason? <laughs> because like there's so many times on set where I'm in like the Shen family household and you get the crew members being like did you ever think that you would be here in season one I'm like no this is this is bizarre but also really fun um yeah for her being that voice of reason I think has, it shows how much one that she's grown from yeah. her point of view of season one all the way to here and 
most of it is straight from the script. I, I hats off to the writers for that. Like they really nailed her kind of humor on the yeah. head. And it's just, uh, it's been really fun to, to play. Like the one-liners that they always give her, their sarcasm in it, they really like embrace that. So yeah, I just really love being able to bring that out. And especially in like the new dynamics, like yeah. her interacting with the family now, like with, and with Henry too, like that's been a really fun dynamic that uh, me and Eddie have really like flushed out with them. The banter I think has been, yeah. been really great. So yeah. So often says what audience members are thinking when they're watching the different scenes and episodes. You know, <laughs> this has also been the longest that you've lived with a character. Has anything surprised you about this experience? What's been the biggest lesson that Jelan has taught you? Wow. Um, I think what she's really taught me is that to allow for the surprises, because I think, mm. you know, and it, it talks a lot maybe about the trajectory of her growth as well, just as a character, but starting with season one I just had this idea of who she was um because it was all it was all laid out there as written and that's who I thought she was going to be and to stay that way almost in a way because I didn't know what was for her in the future and then serendipitously that's like what the character is right now she doesn't know what there is for her in the future and to embrace that and also have that layering on of like my own personal experiences because that's just what life is too is to share and show those like little nuances of of humanity within that script um so that's what she's really taught me is like just the flexibility of just being really open about what she could become and what she is um while also staying true to some of her characteristics I absolutely love so I learned what I loved about her through these three seasons and really tried to embrace that and to carry that through no matter what her journey is um so like her bite like I love her bite and I don't ever yeah. want to see that going away <laughs> um so yeah that's what she's taught me and I've been really grateful for that I'm, I'm so happy I get to to play her you know and for yeah. three years and hopefully a fourth but who knows <laughs> yeah fingers crossed and you know you yeah. and her have had so many standout moments throughout three seasons what's been your favorite scene to film and which has been the most challenging Ooh, I, <laughs> I actually think my favorite episode actually was probably this last one and maybe because it's just so new and fresh, but the the one with um, her going undercover yeah. and being this whole espionage thing with <laughs> with um, uh, Althea was a lot of fun to go uh, play because it's just like another facet of her that was different, but also encompassing kind of everything that was worked on to get her to this moment. Um, I think the challenging ones, I would say, are and and not be not because it was like how should I say this? Not because it was like difficult, but because it, it meant so much were, were the really emotional scenes throughout the three seasons. Yeah. I loved those scenes more than anything because I think it showed her vulnerability. And I don't, I think those moments were just really key for her and her development and growth and also having like an empathy and an understanding for her because she's done some really heinous things. Um, <laughs> But throughout all of that, I still really love her. And I think those moments have really helped connect her to the audience. So I think those are the best, but also the hardest too, because, you know, in those moments, I'm like, I really got to nail it. You only got like a page and a bit. And it's like, where am I going to find those moments of connection for her so that she can resonate with people, you know? Yeah. And you definitely have done that. I think when, when the series concludes whenever it does I think like the moments that will stick out with audiences is when she has that kind of connection with Nikki and says that she's a monster the sacrifice she makes at the end of season two and then also that conversation with Paling in, in season three um, and we know you can't say too much but what's ahead for your character for the rest of season three? Oh yeah okay let me think about this so you don't spoil anything <laughs> um okay I think audiences will get to see things that from what I've read uh that they're hoping to see which is great there's going to be a lot of things that are unexpected like really unexpected as well but I do think you get to see a moment for Jalan of acceptance and it's not going to be in a way that I think people will likely expect but there is an acceptance and then it would also start a beginning of something for her, hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. The cast is so good at giving teasers, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Olivia is queen of that. I, I think we learned from the best. <laughs> she's, she's great at doing that. <laughs> you know, outside of Kung Fu, you're also going to be starring in The Stranger and Avatar, The Last Airbender TV series. Is there anything that you can tell, talk about either of those two projects? Sure. I mean, so The Stranger is a short film that, um, if you if you recall uh, season one, Curtis Lum, he was yeah. playing, uh, yeah, the, the the designer dude, right? So he's great. Him and I have known each other for a really long time because he's from Vancouver as well. And he's producing that short. And he's like, hey, um, I've got this project. I think you'd be great for it. Would you be willing to come come out and just like meet with us and see what it's about? And I met with the director. He was great. And um, we just filmed that within a weekend and I got to see it recently. It's doing its festival rounds and stuff yeah. right now, but it was, it was just a really fun project to do with people in my hometown. And, you know, um, so I'm really looking forward to people seeing that eventually when, when we can show it. And for Avatar, um, gosh, I'm just really, I'm really excited for people to see it. I actually haven't seen anything. I'm going to say that right now. The only stuff I've seen <laughs> It's little snippets of my stuff. I know what Kiyoshi looks like, obviously with the costume and stuff, that's not gonna disappoint. Um, and I've seen like snapshots of photos of things on set and of, you know, when they take shots of like the monitors and stuff for continuity, I got to see that stuff. It looks so cool. <laughs> That looks really, really cool. Um, I really don't think the fans are gonna be disappointed. Like, like I said in, in the past, like, the, the creators of this show, um, the, the creative team of it, of Avatar, they are fans of the source material. They grew up watching the show. Like, and every single department, when I, right when I first got onto that set, everybody was so excited to be there. Everybody had so much passion and has so much love for what they were doing for that show because they're fans of it. They're fans of the story. And so seeing them create this world and having them just put in so much into it and have so much heart into it, I don't think it's going to disappoint. I have no idea when it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I think I think it's going to be this year, but um, I haven't heard any any like concrete news or anything like that. So I feel like I'm just like like everybody else and just like, what do we, what do we get to see? <laughs> yeah. it? I don't know. <laughs> I got to I got two more questions for you. I, uh... Throughout your career, you've done such a great job of picking projects that are having that that have impact on audiences. What is your vetting process like deciding what you want to go out for? And has it changed as a result of being a part of Kung Fu and kind of seeing their fan response from, from that series? So, I mean, I'll be honest, I think like as an actor, most of my job is auditioning. Yeah. And most of it is like looking through those auditions and being like, okay, I just hope that I get this part. I hope I get this. And if anything, I think those projects very fortunately have chosen me. Mm. Um, so I've been very fortunate in the fact that I've gone out for these projects and that they, they saw something that I could bring a value you know, to them. And I'm so grateful that I get to work on those projects and, and Kung Fu being one of them. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, going forward, I just hope that I get to be a part of more projects like this because you're right, like they, they really do say something. And I, I think that's like such a gift and a blessing as an actor to be able to, to say something with your work. Yeah. Um, and it's that whole collective team, it's a whole creative, um, the creative like village that it takes to create these stories that I really give credit to for all of that. So I'm lucky that they chose me <laughs> is, is my answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> so are we. Uh, I got one final question for you. It's a little bit generic, but as you look ahead to the next five to 10 years, you're such a dynamic storyteller. What's left on your bucket list? I am currently during this hiatus period, I've been writing a lot. I've been submitting my stuff for like grants oh, cool. and financing and like just trying to create my own stuff. I love directing. I mean, I say that have, having only directed a couple shorts at this point, but I'm just looking to really practice and learn as much as I can about that, that whole world. Um, and Kung Fu has been really great. And like, they let me shadow direct Joe Menendez, who is phenomenal. And he's taught me a lot. And um, so I'm just looking to put that in practice now. So that's what I'm hoping I, I get to do as part of acting um later down the road because acting is first and foremost my my love um and I'm never going to quit doing that as as long as people will have me <laughs> so but in terms of the other things that's really where I'm I'm just 
putting into some of my focus as well. I've got one follow-up from that then. Have you found that your experiences behind the camera have now impacted the way that you approach your work on screen? 100%. Yeah, such a great question because I think that, and before I even knew if I wanted to direct, before I even had interest in it really, I am always of the mindset that the more you get to know about everybody else's job, the better that I could be at mine. I yeah. need to know what is like, I need to have an understanding of the entire process so I can make better decisions in front of camera and also just in between takes and everything else um, that goes along with it to make everybody else's job a lot easier and also mine and just, just to make the product better overall. So I've always been of the mindset that the more you learn about what it is that you're doing in your workplace, that you will make better decisions for yourself and others. Mm-hmm.